Hey, what's going on guys? Ty from Breaker Culture, hope you're doing well. We are excited because over the next few weeks we're transitioning a lot of what we do at Breaker Culture over to the Bench Clear Media Network and all of our previous content and the ideas that we've been working on uh, will be shifting into the Bench Clear um, Network as a channel here on the YouTube Bench Clear Media side. So please subscribe and uh, get all the notifications that you need to make sure you're getting that content. But today we're kicking off a new series, something that we're calling, for right now at least, What's up with that crazy card chart? And I'm gonna spend a few minutes every week just sharing you with you a couple of visualizations, a couple of uh, charts that I think are fascinating, maybe give you a, a different perspective into what's happening in the card hobby, and uh, hopefully spark some conversation between us about what we see is happening uh, versus maybe what the perception is in different products and sports and singles and all that good stuff. So we're gonna dive into a couple today. Um, here in a second, we're going to talk about 2019-20 basketball hobby box prices. I'm going to show you a couple things around Project 2020. And I also want to dig into 2018 Tops update and show you kind of what's happening with the PSA 10 and BGS 95 um, prices for the core four rookies in that product. Okay, But before we do that, I want to make sure you know that we are giving away today a box of 2019, there you go, 20 mosaic basketball. It's a cello box. It's going for like 300 bucks right now. Um, pretty hot product. We're giving that away. All you have to do, super simple, is answer this question in the comments below. Tell me what NBA player you think will make the most impact in the hobby from now until the end of the season. For those that don't know, today they announced the NBA season is back on July 31st. We're going to have the playoffs. I want to know which player you think is going to make the biggest hobby impact We'll randomize your name on our live show on Sunday night. We're gonna give away all kinds of stuff on Sunday night, but I'm gonna give you a specific box for the watchers of this episode here. And you tell me what player that you think will make the biggest impact. We'll randomize your name and uh, we'll give that box away on the house. Cool? Let's break down some charts. Thanks so much for watching. All right, so let's start with 2018 Tops update. I, I, I like to monitor what's happening with the four core rookies in the, the 18 product. Uh, Ronald Cunha, Juan Soto, Glaber Torres, and, and Shoei Otani, because I think they are very reflective of what the market is doing. Those four key rookies, that product is 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 a very well graded product. You got BGS, lots of BGS pop. You got lots of PSA 10 pop. So you can you can very easily monitor price movement. So if you look at this right here, this is a daily pricing trend for PSA 10s. You can see uh, as the whole market did the end of February into middle of March, it just absolutely exploded. And you saw it pull back considerably out the, uh, the COVID-19 thing, shut down just about everything happening. And then it slowly has, it has risen for almost every guy. Uh, actually looking at it, yeah, it looks like every guy has risen since March 26th, uh, kind of the, the end of middle of March. Yeah, I mean, you saw Acuna, right, from 100 basically to 250 for his PSA 10. So pretty fascinating rise there. And that's all the way back to 191 after dipping to 150. Juan Soto did the same thing, but Soto's basically at where he was uh, at his peak. So he kind of, he's at back at pre-peak prices. Glaber Torres is above his, his high price in, in early March. And Otani who somebody we've been recommending for a long time, uh, I shouldn't say a long time, for the last couple months on the Patreon page, we've been saying, look, this is this is value right here. Like, no way these should be 30 and 40. And I mean, they're, they're nearing 70 bucks now. Now, if we overlay this and I show you the BGS 95s, I'll tell you what, let's do, a, let me give you a better look at this. I'll give you color so you can see the difference. There you go. So Ronald Acuna's, you know, PSA 10's 191 or his, his BGS 9.5 is 100 bucks. I think, okay, well, that's half the price. That's a, a very wide gap. Well, actually, a more of an unusual gap, I would say. Um, whereas you look at Juan Soto, right, with PSA 10 at 132 and his his BGS 9.5 is at 104. So a you know 30% increase, 30% gap between PSA 10 and BGS 9.5. So that's that to me seems a little bit more normal. And then you look at Glaber Torres, right, 113 for his PSA 10 and 63 for his BGS 9.5. And then Otani, uh, 69 for his PSA 10 and 32 for his BGS 95. So again, a little bit more than double. Um, it makes me think one of two things. One, the the PSA, the, excuse me, the BGS 95 is a little bit overpriced for Soto. 
I, and I don't think so. I think the 30% gap, the range there is, is about normal. That's actually what the historical range is. It's somewhere between 25 and 45% uh, for a BGS95 to a PSA 10, that gap. The other thing, the other, the flip side of that is you got, there's the opportunity there for Ronald Acuna BGS 95s, uh, Juan Soto BGS 95s, and Otani BGS 95s. So either the PSA 10s drop a little bit in price or the BGS 95s creep up. I would guess that, I mean, I think the, the, the season's going to dictate some of the pricing, unfortunately, but I think I would be, I would err on the side of BGS 95s for these, these guys being a little bit underpriced now real quickly if we look at if we look at uh volume i want to show you something real quick um this is this is trending volume right so behind the scenes here you have the bars that show you prices weekly combined prices so what are they all selling for um this is actually showing you daily volume so volume is interesting to me because I, I think that's you know, there's plenty of inventory inventory is not the problem it is demand is there enough demand? You can see that we had crazy volume and it kind of riz, risen, it's risen back up essentially for the past four weeks. In the last two, two weeks, you've seen kind of from the middle of May until the first week of June, volume has dropped off considerably. So I don't know if that is just a, there's some disinterest in baseball, maybe a little bit of a turnoff or if um, attention is being steered elsewhere. But that is something to watch very closely is it doesn't really matter what prices do if volume drops off this much so want to know your thoughts on the 2018 tops update i think it is a very very fascinating set of, of cards to watch so let me know what you think about these any questions you have and let's uh let's pump over to the 2019 20 NBA wax. So this is something that I, I give uh, Patreon users every week or so, and this is what I call the trifecta graph on the on the wax sales side. And it's looking at three different things here for wax prices. You look at daily combined wax sales. It's looking at daily volume, and it's looking at the average box sell price. Now. Um, you have to kind of keep everything in context, right? Because you have new releases that come out and they almost immediately influence numbers here, right? So you got daily wax sales, which looks at really what's the market doing? How many, how, how much are people spending as a whole each and every day, right? So you can see, um, you know, back in January, your spent the peak was about eight grand. You pull back in between releases, you get to, you know, nine, 9,500, you pull back and then you get a big optic release. You get up to 12,000, 13,000. And then you pull back and then you get up to you know that the big wave of buys that we have in march that big peak we just talked about with update you got up to 14 plus and then we started to see the dip right we started to see a little bit of a downtrend you would normally see this trend upwards all the way through the season almost and you would see the ebbs and flows and then um, you would start to see it die out a little bit towards the end of the playoff season um you can see here that the daily wax sales uh, are, are not, they, they've kind of broken a trend line here. Like they've dipped down below. They have before, but they dipped down below. And you don't. I mean, we have some NT, F, you know, first off the line coming out. We have some Court King stuff coming out, but a little bit concerning there. And you look at daily volume, right? This is what's probably more concerning to me is that we rose kind of through all of this stuff, and we popped through with that excitement, the sports card buzz happening in in April there, and we we've kind of lost volume like we've, we've just we've died off we're hanging below this average this season average and uh we're not seeing a whole ton of you know transaction volume and you look at average prices per box sold right we were hanging below that trend line and then here we are above it because new artists came out if we take out nervously enough if we take out um noir you can see here that it it does affect the sold price quite a bit, right? It drops right to the trend line. And you even got daily combined wax sales dipping way down. So that that does, I mean, a release makes a big difference, right? You can see there how how much it moves it, right? And if you, if you just take out Mosaic too, you can see everything changes, everything changes. And again, that is a part of the deal. That is what we see here. It's part of the deal. Um, so hopefully, <laughs> I don't know really what the takeaway is here other than that, I, I would just, I'd be very cognizant of kind of 
the, the volume of the transaction volume of box sales. And, and look, we're, we're, we haven't had a lot of releases, right? We've had some print issues and COVID-19 issues. So we're dealing with that. But uh, I think we got to be, we got to watch closely what's happening with, with all of that. So if we look at another chart here, and this is combined wax sales. This is, this is looking at, it's what we just saw here, but I'm playing it out a little bit longer, right? Really back to November, we look and look at um, the daily combined sales for all of wax. Again, and we played out over the, the long term. You can see here that we, we have the ebbs and flows, very wide, long gaps in between releases. Big sales, big peaks, pull back, starts to creep back up. Maybe, you know, pre-sales creep back up. Boom, there's the release. Drop, all that stuff. You can see here, it, it's, it's, I mean, nothing too crazy, right? We're kind of right back to where we were. You would, you would hope that we get close to, to breaking a peak here and we continue to grow with some releases. But, you know, you take out Noir again, and I mean, you're, you're, you're dipping really, really far back into the February range of combined sales. And uh, that 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 to me is really concerning that we're we're not seeing kind of the the excitement the follow through with with box prices and or excuse me box sales. So just something to watch. I do think with NBA being announced back on July 31st, that's probably going to drive these prices even higher because you got no competing real competing sport until football comes. So I, I would I would assume that we start to see prices shoot back up on the NBA wax market. So um, let me know what you think about the wax stuff. That, that, that to me is something that I like to watch a lot because it helps us understand what's happening with the, you know, the, the true investors, the, 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 the people that are really holding the money bags and, and trying to control prices a little bit in the marketplace. A, <laughs> we'd be remiss if I didn't talk about Project 2020 today because obviously there's lots of you know, buzz around the product and everyone's trying to figure out what's happening. Um, so I want to show you a, I want to play through a chart that I think demonstrates really kind of where we're at with Project 2020. So the dots here represent the total amount of sales for Project 2020 cards that day. So this is daily. And then you're going to see bar charts that recommend the, um, that, that, that demonstrate the amount of volume for that day. So the number of sold cards that day. So I'm going to go ahead and play this out here for you. And uh, I'll play it in a medium speed here so you can kind of see. You see it's growing here pretty good. And then right about here, you start to see volume pick up. And uh, again, vo volumes, I mean, doubling, tripling, quadrupling. And all of a sudden you see prices. Again, these dots here, you know, you're averaging 29,000. You know, and you can see here um, 31,000. This is early, early May. We play this out a little bit longer. You can see here it starts to grow slightly and then all of a sudden that third week of may we start to see this absolute explosion of prices you can see here prices go up 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 there's the price the price to 200 to 350 to 500 to 600 excuse me 525 and in the last week you can see everything start to crumble so if we play that back um, just a few steps right we hit our peak right here on what is that may 27th so we are a about a week removed from our peak and you can see here once we hit that peak it it has absolutely crumbled uh you saw you've seen basically everything from volume to average sales price to combined sales price i mean everything has absolutely broken down in the project 2020 market and you can see here that th there is <laughs> I don't want to say this and and make you think that I don't believe that there's opportunity in Project Twenty, but there's no sign of this stopping, right? This is this is a this is very concerning. This is a massive bubble that had to fill. I think we have to get back down around a hundred thousand bucks in sales, which means we need to basically cut another thirty percent off of our daily sales to get to a point where it's probably manageable. And here's what you have to take in consideration, right, with this, because Project Twenty Twenty cards are continuing to come out every single day. You're gonna keep having new cards pop up. You have the Trouts, the, um, you know, all, all 20 of each of these players are gonna continue to hit the market. And so what we're gonna to have to figure out is how do we handle this, right? I mean, what, what do we do with with uh, 
with all these new cards and obviously the influx in the market, is that going to is that going to help bring up cumulative sales? Is that going to help drive up volume? Because you could think volume would continue going up here, but you have new cards coming out every other day basically, and you're not seeing volume go up. That to me tells me that you're seeing a shift. Most of the buyers here that drove this up could did not get all these cards beforehand. They went up and bought all these cards beforehand. And now from here forward, somewhere around here, you have people going to tops.com and buying their own cards. And uh, you've seen volume and prices drop off and reflect that considerably. Um, so one more thing, let me show you this on project 2020. I think it's pretty fascinating. And that is the sales price density. I've been showing this on Twitter every couple days. And really what this shows is the, the density around certain price points, right? You can see here from release, you, you had basically cards hanging around the 20 to 50, 20 to $60 range. And you can see here, that's where most of the purchases were kind of focused. And then as, as time went on, you started to see there was a pretty evenly spread distribution of price, uh, you know, receipt spend uh, across price ranges from 200 to 1200. And during that peak there, you saw really solid distribution of prices paid. And then you, you saw obviously the, you know, the, the outliers of the Ichiro and a couple of the trouts that were very expensive. And then you've seen kind of this decline of people's willingness to pay super high prices for these cars. And again, who, know, who knows exactly what's driving that, right? Maybe it's the realization that this, uh, this wasn't, this isn't, doesn't have the long-term uh, price potential, or maybe a lot of the big buyers started to pull out or they, they got their cards and that's that, right? And you, you can only have so many big buyers at certain price points, right? Especially for cars that are unproven. And that's what we saw here. And you can see that we don't have any density uh, above 4,000. And then a couple days later, we don't have any density around, above 3,000, right? And then two days later, we can't get anybody to spend over 2,400 for any card. And then, you know, nothing above 1,800. So you can start to see the decline of people's willingness to pay. And even down here at the, you know, 1,200 to $800 range, you see this, this shift in people's willingness to pay higher prices. Uh, there's a few in here, right? But you know, back here, this was filled pretty well, and you can see people paying a lot of prices. A lot of, a lot of transactions were kind of focused in that area. So, another interesting way to look at Project 2020 and the shift, the very quick shift of people's perception of long-term value and their willingness to spend money on the set. So, we'd love to know your thoughts on that as well. Let me know what you think. Uh, with that. Uh, that's a wrap of episode one of what's up with those card charts. Let me know what you think and we'll uh, continue to put out this content to help you think through different, different uh, perspectives in the sports car world. All right. Have a good day.